girl, is we, is y'all, wa- is y'all watching Port- Portomic? Is y'all watching Potomac? Is y'all watching Potomac? I, you know, at first I said I wasn't going to watch it because I just felt like, girl, what are we watching? But now that Kiana is on, I'm like, I really want to see her because I actually like her. I really like her. And I also think that now that Candace is gone, now this is in no way, shape, or form me saying that I think Candace is the problem or anything like that. But I feel like now that Candace is gone, because Candace was a ringleader and just like, not ringleader, but like Candace had her side, Giselle had her side, and you had to pick a side. That def- Now that she's not here, it kind of diffuses the sides. So basically what I'm saying, had Giselle left, they would have gotten along. Had Candace left, they would have gotten along. Like it just, it just one of the two had to go. So I think people are going to be able to get along a little bit better. Anyway, say all that to say that Miss Karen Huger, no ma'am, girl. When I tell you the way that Karen and Giselle jumped up on Mia and back to in the corner, Mia wouldn't have been able to tell me a thing. Said I know I I know Mia is not in here fighting for her life when she got the big Joker. Maybe the way I would have been talking about Karen Huger being a delusional drunk left and right girl please oh I know ma'am Karen I love you girl you funny as hell to me but the way that you back me up in that corner girl you wouldn't have been able to tell me a goddamn thing you would have been able to tell me a motherfucking thing bitch I'm gonna tell you that right now you wouldn't have been able to tell me a goddamn thing girl Karen Karen Huger you would not have been able to say a damn thing to me not a fuck thing to me okay anyway hey y'all Welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle. This is the Belle Perspective, and we are here today to talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac. Girl, are you ready, girl? We back, girl. This is season nine, episode one, a crash course in deflection, and that's exactly what Karen did this entire episode. Okay, if you're new to my channel, I talk about reality TV, movies, books, all kinds of things. So get in where you fit in by subscribing to the channel, getting in the comments, letting me know what you think about the episode, and liking this video before you leave. Okay. Let's get into the review. All right, so we see Karen. Actually, we see Giselle in the car, and she is on the way. Tacky, her usual. Anyway, let me just, let me not, let me not get on Giselle, okay? Let me not get on Giselle just yet, all right? So Giselle is on her way to go pick up Karen. They're going to have brunch. Now, I thought that they were going to go to, like, this sleep upscale place. They went to the honky-tonk place around the corner, okay? It's also really kind of interesting looking at all of this, the places that they go because some of these places are like, oh, my God, I went there. Or, I, I was just there. Anyway, anyway, okay. So we go to the little honky-tonk little brunch spot, and I I was like, okay, is this a PR stunt? Because the waiter was already like, hey, Karen, what's going on? I was like, okay. Girl, he went out of the way to try to say, oh, you know, she never got a drink here. And Karen, really, if you want to be, if you really want to like smooth things over, maybe you should tell us exactly what's going on and what the hell happened. It caused your ass to get in the goddamn car, okay? And do what you did, okay? Anyway, so Giselle kind of pussyfoots a little bit around it. She, you know, she lightly touches on it saying, you know, Karen, I heard about all the charges, girl, all the violations and everything. Now, do I believe that Giselle was being messy? Absolutely. Hell yeah. But also, girl, this is a part of the show. You get a DUI, bitch, we talking about that shit, okay? And we're going to try to find out exactly what the fuck going on. Now, Karen did the classic Karen elation, okay? She basically was like, this is a, you know, moving her mouth in the in a confessional. This is a this is a court case, and I'm not going to be able to talk about it. But when the truth comes out, truth, girl, truth, girl, you got drunk, got in the car, and hit a tree, girl. What else is there to talk about, love? But anyway, okay. So Giselle is really trying to like ask questions. Obviously, she wants to get to know. Getting her to talk about things, Karen shuts it down. But what Karen does not shut down is other people gossip. I noticed that Karen had no problem trying to get in other people's business, but wanted to make sure that nobody talked about her shit. I said, oh, no, ma'am, we are not doing that this season, love. No, ma'am, okay? If they got to talk about it, you got to talk about it, okay? So anyway, now um, she talks a little bit about it being based on the, the issues that she had a lot going on, grief, marriage, all this other stuff. And I'm thinking, so what the hell going on with you and Ray? And what the hell going on? Okay, so let me not be insensitive. 
losing your loved one is never easy. It's always going to be hard. But I'm trying to remember exactly when she got that damn DUI. I could have sworn that damn DUI ain't had nothing. It was not around Mother's Day. It wasn't around Father's Day. It wasn't nowhere around the time frame when those types of things could trigger. Was it her mama's birthday, her daddy's birthday? I don't know. Maybe I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that none of those things were the case. And this is your second DUI, Karen. I, I, okay. Anyway, Giselle tells her she wants to have a birthday lunch for her. And it's going to be called the Hattitude Party Girl. Giselle is so fucking corny, girl. When she was giving out the instructions, I was like, oh, my gosh. What the fuck? Who did this? Who? 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 who, who, who? What is this idea? Who is this? Did production put you up to this? Oh, girl. Anyway, so <laughs> I was so displeased. Oh, girl, please, girl. Anyway, okay, so we get to me a bitch. Okay, so part of me, like, the messy part of me is like, girl, what the fuck you got going on over there, Mia? You messy, girl? You a pimp? What's going on? But the other part of me is like, girl, your son is actually, your son and daughter are old enough to understand what's going on for the most part, especially since your son, since he's the oldest. And if you are broadcasting that your son could potentially not be G's son, girl, that's, that's implications that's going to blow up everybody's life, including your son which is the who's the most vulnerable in this situation. So part of me is like, girl, yes, with the mess. But also, shout out to Scotty by nature. But also, girl, uh, girl, no, this your son and he is vulnerable and you don't need to be putting him on blast like that, girl. I don't, I don't, I, I'm uneasy about the situation. But since we're talking about it, okay, since she opened the door, let's just walk right on inside, okay? So G has moved into the same building as Mia. She told my son she can't get her sneaky link on. I said, now, bitch. What the fuck you need to sneak a link for, girl? The nigga know you fucking on G or whatever, what's that boy's name? Ink, whatever the hell. What, what is his real name? Because Ink is such a tired ass name. Like, what is that supposed to mean exactly? Incorporated? Ink, like Inkwell? I don't know. I don't like it. Okay? I don't like it. But anyway, she claimed she can't sneak a link because G is in the same building. What you sneaky linking with? Because G already know you fucking on that man. Okay, I, y'all get in the comments and tell me what y'all think. Cause girl, what the fuck you talk about, girl? It ain't sneaky if the nigga know what the fuck going on. Okay, <laughs> and the kids too, girl. Everybody know. We all know, girl. You ain't sneaking. Okay, going on a world tour with the nigga, girl. We see the pictures, girl. He throwing you up in the in the in the sunset, girl, and you throwing your weed back like everything, girl. Please, okay. Uh. Anyway, ciao, bye. All right. So Mia says that she feels like she gave everything in the marriage. G was like, okay, <laughs> girl. If that's what you say, y'all, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna argue with you, okay? I ain't gonna argue. I ain't gonna argue. She was like, you think differently? He was like, yeah, because when we separate, we supposed to separate and go our separate ways, not you jumping on new dick, okay? She was like, I did not do that. Uh, Mia, yeah, you did, because you've been cheating on that man for the last 10 years. He had said it already last season, okay? What's T, girl? What's T, girl? What's T, okay? Anyway, so we talk about the whole paternity test thing. Apparently, Ink wants to take Jeremiah to get a paternity test. G is like, tell that boy he need to go on, go on the fuck on, child. This is my son. He need to go on. But G, you don't want to put it out there. So, I mean, you kind of opened up this can of worms. You really did. You really did. So, uh, do, I blame, do I blame Mia? Absolutely. Because she, you know, <laughs> Mia was being Mia. But also, G, you don't want to put that shit out there. So, since you put it out there, carry it through. Do I think that G... I feel like G is so desperate to have arm candy. Not even arm candy. I feel like G is so desperate to not be left alone because pretty much his family ain't fucking with him like that. You know, they they suing him. You know, he his ex-wife probably ain't fucking with him like that. I think he's just, this is his last ditch effort to try to hold on to anybody who's been any type of semblance of a family to him. Girl, because he done burned so many bridges. That's my, that's my opinion, okay? So, I think Mia asked him, do you think that there's a possibility of Jeremiah being Ink's son? Or G asked that of Mia. And she was like, yeah, it's always a possibility. I said, ooh, bitch. This is not funny at all. This is not funny. Not funny at all, but also <laughs> Oh, God. Anyway, let's move on. Ashley and this divorce. Me or not, or she likes me or not. Right is right and Bitch, I don't care about, you know what, I don't, do I like Ashley? I do not like Ashley. Ashley remind me of Doja Cat. Now, here's the thing. I love Doja Cat music, but Doja Cat as a person, 
it's like, I can't explain what it is about Doja Cat as a person that bothers me. And I feel like I know what it is, but I probably wouldn't say it on YouTube because, girl, this is a video that's going to be blasted to the internet for the rest of the, forever and ever. But that's something about Doja Cat that I just be like, uh, her personally, like just as a person. Musically, artistically, I like her. But anyway, Ashley remind me of Doja Cat. And it, it give me that same it. I don't too much care for her, but girl, she playing with us, playing with the attorney girl. Miss Attorney Lady, I hope you got your retainer cut because this girl finna play in your goddamn face, okay? I hope you got paid up front because this bitch about to play in your goddamn face. Talking about she, she, try, she ready to divorce Michael. She going on dates with these cheesy, corny ass dudes. I'm like, but which, which, these are guys that I do believe she would go on dates with, but also, girl, who is paying you right now? I know Bravo's paying you, but I also know Michael is paying you. And the last time I checked, the last time we talked during the reunion of last season, you were talking about you was rubbing that nigga feet every night. So, girl, how all of a sudden it leave from you? I love that man. I'm rubbing his feet every night. You not talking about you ready to get a divorce, bitch. Uh, Liz, girl. Oh, go away from us with this, girl. Bye, Doja Cat. Anyway, Wendy is quitting her job as a professor. Was she, was she at Johns Hopkins? I think she's in Baltimore, right? I know she lives in Baltimore, but I wasn't sure if, which is annoying because Baltimore is not a part of the DMV. But I wasn't sure. I think she's at Johns Hopkins. Anyway, she quit in child. The only thing I got to say about Wendy is they kept showing us flashbacks of when she was telling everybody she had four degrees and all this other stuff. And I was looking at her and Eddie, and I was like, baby, when I tell you <laughs> what a, a couple Bravo checks can do for a good look, baby. We not ugly. We just broke, okay? Because, baby... Ooh, the way that the way that Eddie had them glasses, them uncle glasses. Ooh, ooh, we not ugly, girl. We just broke. That's all. Because they was cashing them damn checks in down to that surgery, off, down to that plastic surgeon office, girl. Anyway, let's move on. Shout out to Dr. Wendy, girl. Beautiful girl. We love you, child. Moving on. Karen, Vivian, and Stacy. Now, Vivian, I guess, is a friend of the, of the show, my proxy or whatever, to introduce Stacy. Now, is is Karen the girl that's always introducing the girls that's going to be on the show? Because she was the one that also introduced Mia to the show, too. I don't know. Anyway, so we see that Stacey is, she was living in Philly at one point in time. She worked for QV QVC. You know, we was already hearing the scuttlebutt on the internet because niggas can't keep shit to themselves, right? So we was already hearing the scuttlebutt on the internet, but she used to work for the QVC. And she's going through a divorce. Now, the way that Karen had that, had that lady reveal that she was going through a divorce, I said, Karen, oh, my God, she was talking to her friend Vivian. Were they at Tyson's Corner? All my girls, all my girls in D.C. and Virginia, were they in uh, Maryland? Like, y'all know what I'm talking about, the DMV, the actual DMV, because Baltimore is not DMV. Was that, is that mall at Tyson's Corner? It's like, what mall is that? Because what's the mall that has the bridges that cross over? That's the only one I'm thinking of, Tyson's. It may be something else, but I can only think of Tyson's. Anyway, so they all get together or whatever. They meet in that Vivian shop, and Karen sees Stacy. Stacy goes into the little uh, changing room because they in Vivian shop trying to find like ball gowns and stuff. And Karen was like, "Girl, what's her ring?" They talking about that lady like she not. I said, "Ooh, girl." Lady walked back out. She was like, "What's going on?" It was like, "Girl, what happened to your ring, girl? What's going on?" That's when Stacy reveals to us that she's going through a divorce. Her husband is German, basically white. I don't know why they say call him German. Girl, he white. Girl, he's a white man, okay? She married to a white man, getting a divorce from him. They were married for 16 years. They've been separated for a year, but now they're finalizing their divorce. So she has a daughter that's, I think, eight years old. Like Stacey, she, she seemed like she all right. She seemed like she cool or whatever. So this is going to be interesting. They talk a little bit about the Hattitude Party. They show us this tired ass invitation that Giselle looks like girl and Cal in the background pretending to be a beatbox or something I was like y'all just couldn't play no music girl you just can't send a text because that would have been the equivalent girl Ugh. <laughs> she's so fucking corny to me okay anyway Stacy and Vivian are sharing a glass of champagne in the boutique and Stacy you know she was being messy or trying to be considerate. She was like, oh my God, Karen, is this going to affect you? Karen was like, what? Knowing exactly what she's talking about. She was like, what exactly? You know, us drinking champagne. She was like, no, I'm on medication right now. I'll be drinking with you. I'll be having libations with you soon. Bitch. Okay, girls. <laughs> 
what medications are you on? Okay. And why the hell you wasn't on them got medi- goddamn medications to keep your ass out of that damn car, to keep your ass from having a damn DUI. Girl, Karen Pudley, now you on medication that prevents you from drinking? Karen, I'm a, uh, Pudley's, okay? I don't expect somebody to embarrass you, right? Or berate you, but be for real. All right, so we get to the party now, girl. The party. <laughs> they wasn't afraid to get the mess started, okay? And so Ashley gets in. She says, here's this bounce back basket. What's it called? The bounce back basket, girl. I got her a, a birdhouse so she can paint. Find her something to do. Water bottle and an Uber gift card. I said, oh. Was, was I the only one like, Ashley, bitch, don't. Oh, my God. Anyway, Giselle was like, I would have gotten her Uber gift cards, too. She said, oh, y'all. Y'all ain't shit. Okay, y'all ain't shit. I mean, y'all right, but y'all ain't shit. Anyway, we find out Giselle has invited Wendy. Giselle says that she's all about peace now after her father passed. Okay. (laughs) You know, and she's, after her father passed, she has more empathy and compassion. I said, well, girl, what was that shit? What was that shit at the the reunion, girl? What was the empathy and compassion in? Girl, just say that the people, the production team said, y'all better get y'all motherfucking shit together or you'll be cut off, okay? You need to start showing empathy and compassion. Kid, as it's kept, that's exactly what I know happened. They told her, Giselle, you don't show any empathy. You do not show compassion. You need to start doing that for the season because motherfucking people don't like your ass. Because that's literally what I was reading in all my tweets. No empathy, no compassion. So now she's saying, girl, please. We already know the game. Giselle want to stay employed, and Wendy does too. I'm not mad at them because I wouldn't be giving up no Wendy or Bravo checks for nobody neither. Okay, y'all saw that man lurking, girl. That shit was funny as hell. I mean, at first when he was over there lurking at Jack over there near Jacqueline, I was like, who the fuck is this man? But then when he was lurking, when he saw what Jacqueline was saying to Karen, he was like, oh, bitch, that shit was funny as hell. Anyway. So we got all the girls coming in. We got Jacqueline. We got Jazzy, who's a new girl that's being introduced as a friend of the show through Mia. Her husband is an NFL player. He plays for the Kansas City Chiefs, who are two-time Super Bowl winners. Wendy tells us that she's become a Swifty now. Okay, that's wonderful. Anyway, Karen hasn't arrived, but all the other girls are there. So they're like, is anybody heard from Karen? Mia was like, yeah, Jacqueline heard from Karen a while ago. She called her drunk. Everybody was like, ooh. Wendy said, ooh, I don't want no parts. Girl, Wendy said, girl, I it was so fucking funny. I, I think Wendy heard all the, the I guess, the people, she saw that Wendy, everybody liked how she was looking into the camera and drinking and, you know how she did in the last season. I guess she's trying to do it again. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm analyzing this. Like, I don't know. Anyway, so it was funny. It was funny to me. Okay, so, all right. So they get, Karen finally gets there and they're at the table and, Baby, they couldn't get couldn't wait to get a damn party started. Giselle was like, "Okay, so the rules of the game: you can, if anybody has a attitude, you'll get a taco hat or a banana." Girl, you in this game, okay? <laughs> you in this game? God damn it, I'm sick of this. Uh, who, who is this? Who whose idea for this goddamn game? Far side and do something else. Anyway, all right, so. She tells Giselle, I mean, Giselle tells Karen, you know, again, some more shade, again, some more shade. So we got the Surrey County, we got the Grand Dom. I think there was another drink that was like based off of Karen. They was like, but the Grand Dom is non alcoholic, just for you. I said, oh, girl, we gonna be. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. Giselle, do your job. Do that. Do that. Because listen, the way Karen wants to skate around and skirt around and skirt, no, ma'am. Okay. Anyway, we get to the party, right? We get we get the party started. Giselle was like, listen, the girls had questions about your girl, okay? And I said I wasn't going to say nothing. I was going to wait till you got here. Karen was like, child, I heard you niggas were looking for me. Bitch, here I go, okay? Here I go. 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 Ask me all the questions you need. What's going on? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Okay? Anyway, so all the girls was like, oh, bitch, Jacqueline. Okay, you know, me a friend. Well, we're just happy that you're okay and that you didn't hurt anybody and nobody got hurt and no kid got hurt or nothing. Everybody was like, oh, okay, girl, what? <laughs> okay. When I tell you Stacy is not ready for these girls because the way that we got started getting into talking about Mia, Stacy was like, what? Oh, my God. Girl, that shit was funny as hell to me. Anyway, so 
All right. So Karen was like, listen, cut all that shit out. Here. I'm I'm trying to find out who is base, who's one of my my riders, who's going to ride for me, okay? Who's my real friend cuz I don't need no fake bitches around. Basically, I translated that into, okay? I'm down bad. If y'all hoes talk about me or try to talk about me like a dog, I'm going to realize that you ain't my friend and you're going to be on my shit list, basically. Okay? Don't go there. All right? But in my mind, it's like, ma'am, this is a TV show. You need to put your life on display. Your life is on display. You're able to cash all these checks from displaying your life. Part of your life is you getting that goddamn DUI. Okay? And so don't act all upset when people come for you because guess what love you would do the very same thing had it been anybody else if karen was in this situation or if somebody was else in this situation ashley was in this situation giselle was in this situation wendy was in this situation mia was in this situation baby karen would be doing the exact same thing because just like she turned around and deflected okay okay a crash course in deflection is the perfect name for this damn episode because that's exactly what karen as did all right so Anyway, girl, I'm yelling. So, all right. Now, here we go. Um, Giselle starts handing out the hats, girl. She was, girl, right there. Girl, okay. Now, she gives Mia a hat, basically calling her the king. Because Mia over there pimping all over the world, all right? So, then we start asking about the situation with G. And they're also, Karen and, or not Karen, but Giselle and Ashley are inviting the, the girls to another event about for GNA Fusion. <laughs> Girl, Wendy was like, what are y'all fusion? What are y'all fusing? Girl, the, the, the looks from the fashion show are not on the website. Girl, what are y'all? Girl, what number? Some tube socks? Girl, what was on, what was on the website, girl? Tube socks. Tube socks and a beanie, girl. And a t-shirt. Oh, girl, she by Sheree 2.0, girl. <laughs> she by charade 2.0 girl but anyway Wendy was like what the hell y'all fusing okay anyway so we get to the to Mia the Mia of it all girl okay so are you with the DJ what's going on with G she's my son you know G I was married to him for a very long time but you know it's a business arrangement and they're all like nah because you was married to him for 11 years you had children with him girl couldn't have been that she was like that's what it is you know and they I don't know how the conversation got switched oh that's it. Mia says that she was doing G, her and um, her new boyfriend were doing G's laundry. So I said, so all, so now that G, now G has two home health aids, he got two home health aids. Is that's what is that what you're telling us? Because what, girl, why are you? Why is your new man doing your old man's laundry? I said, girl, whatever. Teach you some, teach classes, girl. Whatever you got going on, teach teach us your ways. Okay, minus the. I got two men and don't know the baby daddy kind of. I don't want to know about all that shit. Anyway, so we get to the part where, um, I tell you, Stacy Face was like, bitch, what the fuck? It was like, oh, did you let, J did Jacqueline, um, try ink? And it, Stacey was like, what? Oh my God. And then they said something about the kids said that they saw Mia in the bed sleeping with ink. And it's, it's like, huh? Oh my <laughs> bitch what is going on like yeah girl they, they they wild over here girl okay this ain't beverly hills love it ain't beverly hills okay anyway so i don't know how we got to this conversation i think it was the part where karen was like i'm concerned for you your kids were plastered you know i'm concerned for your children which i am too like that's my part it's like okay if i knew mia for real for real and she was my friend i would be more concerned about her children right and then Giselle decides to take it upon herself to tell Mia that she feels like Mia did not protect her children at all costs. Mia gets real emotional. Now, am I, is Giselle wrong? You know what? I'm going to ask y'all, what do you think? Do you think Giselle was wrong for saying that Mia did not protect her kids at all costs? I personally think that Mia did not. Because my the paternity of my ch my children's father and the paternity of them, girl, I do not want that to be fodder for the TV, girl. I wouldn't. But you know what? The other part about that, now that I'm thinking about it, G was the one that brought that up. He the one that opened that can. He opened that can. Girl, this shit is mess. 
see. Mia gets emotional. She runs up, runs to the bathroom. People trying to chase out for her, girl. She is mad. Girl, this season look like it's going to be good, girl. This season looks like it's going to be very good, very interesting. I don't know where Kiana was, girl. I'm, I'm watching this show for Kiana, so she better come on within the next She need to be on by next episode, okay? Anyway, y'all get down in the comments. Let me know what you think about the episode, girl. But tell me, girl, they didn't suck me back in. I done got sucked back in, girl. Oh my god. Anyway, get in the comments. Let me know what you think about the episode. Don't forget to like this video before you leave. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Usually, I don't do this often, but since recruit.